Colorado holds the values and traditions of a gracious past when the silver mines made it the richest city in the West. But the people of Denver have kept to the simple and neighborly life. Because those dear hearts and gentle Read the good book from Friday till Monday. That's how the weekend goes. I'll got a dream house. I'll build there one day with picket fence and rambling rope. I feel so well. I love the dear hearts and gentle people who live and love, who live and love, who live and love in my Give me a Damatassi and put it in a big cup. You know, I just came back from my silver mine where I struck the mother load. I didn't like doing that, boys, but I wanted mother not to get loaded. <laughs> oh, I ain't got no change, uh, just this silver ore. Have you got five pebbles uh, for that rock? <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Howdy, partner. How do you do? Pickaxe Perry is my name, and silver is my game. <laughs> I feel like Liberace. You know, you could have fooled me <laughs> around these parts. They called me Sterling Durante. <laughs> That's because I'm so polished. <laughs> How many mines have you got, Sterling? Eight. Eight. And they all got rich veins. <laughs> oh, yeah. My veins and my mines are so rich, the beams in my tunnel wear support holes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got one mine that just makes silver spoons for rich kids' mouths. <laughs> One of, <laughs> one of my minds turns out bullets for the Lone Ranger. <laughs> but I got me to get rid of that little one. It only makes dimes. <laughs> There's a sample of my ore right there. Well, that's your ore? Get a load of this ore. <laughs> <laughs> that's remarkable. Yeah, and I got a solid silver canoe to go with it. Oh. <laughs> Tell me something, uh, pickaxe. How did you happen to wind up in Denver? Well, you want to know how I happened to wind up in Denver? I'll tell you how I happened to wind up in Denver. I was driving a rig out of Texas, full loaded, on the Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Taking my friends so freely, yeah. just a good loving ride man. Quite away with the ladies. No. Sweet Daddy was my middle name. Till I got to a place they call Denver, and I ain't never been quite the same. You know something, uh, pickaxe? <laughs> Our stories are similar. You know, I used to be like you, footloose, and then I started wearing my shoes two sizes smaller. <laughs> but you finally settled down, right? Not right away, uh, did you? No, not quite. I had a woman, I chased a woman for quite a while, but she finally caught me in Denver. The same thing happened to me. It's my 25th anniversary this month. 16 wonderful years. <laughs> 
How did you first meet her, Sterling? How did I first meet her, Sterling? I'll tell you how I first met her, Sterling. Well, I kissed her and swore that I loved her. I told her someday she'd be mine. I'm sorry, that's your one. Then I laughed all the way back to Texas just to think she'd believe that old line. When I got to pine and put Denver, take this one. It's funny how things come to be. And as I slipped a ring on her finger, well, I knew that the laugh was on me. We've been to St. Louis and I believe we rambled to many a town. But we got us a woman in Denver. Lord. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is the world famous Denver omelette. <laughs> rumor has it that this omelette wasn't invented in Albuquerque, but that is strictly a rumor. You're probably thinking of the Albuquerque omelette, which was invented by Alvin Irving Albuquerque in the room. Now, for you people who would like to make your own Denver omelette, I'm going to give you the recipe. So get a pencil and paper and write this down. Now, Take, uh, take one plump chicken. Now remove an egg. Gently. Now, take one cow and remove one glass of milk. Julia Child wouldn't use fresh ingredients. Now, wait a minute. This next step is very important. Don't throw away the chicken or the cow. Because when friends drop in unexpectedly, you can always dice them up and use them for leftovers. <laughs> now, the omelet that we're making will serve too. But of course, you can always add a pound of taffy and stretch a little bit. <laughs> like this. All right, Hanley, we know you're out there. Come on with your hands up. <laughs> now, after you've added your green peppers, your onions, and the ham, <laughs> Be sure to beat those eggs furiously. They're masochistic little creatures, and the more you beat them, the more they love you. <laughs> now, and lastly, ladies, before making this omelet, be sure you grease your pan. <laughs> and while you're at it, put some curls in your hair, and you'll be all ready for bed. <laughs> now, the Denver omelet... <laughs> the Denver omelet can be served plain, or with sauce. Personally, I wouldn't serve it any other way but with the sauce. <laughs> Whoa! Da -da 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 -da. Uh, Mr. Hartford. Yes. Do you like it here in Denver? Yes, I like it just fine. Well, uh, are you a miner? No, I'm over 21. Oh, no, no, that's not what I meant. I mean, do you have a silver mine? Yes, I do, and it's just like gold. Oh, really? Well, that must make you awfully happy. No, it makes me rich, but there's one sad thing about being rich. Well, what's that? Well, I miss the wonderful sounds that I used to hear when I was poor, like the rattling of my old, old car, the special mm -hmm. squeak of a pair of cheap shoes, and uh, I miss a lot of sounds like that. Well, gee, why don't you tell me some more about it? <laughs> okay. Sure do miss that good old electric washing machine. A oh, one that we ain't got round here no more. And I sure do miss that big round tub and them stomping, swinging sounds. And I miss them groovy puddles on the floor.